the many vital parts of the airplane, the alighting gear is subject to the greatest strains and shocks. It is designed to absorb and cushion the impact of repeated landings and to sustain the weight of the airplane as it rolls across the ground at high speed. The failure of an alighting gear on the takeoff or on the landing may result in the complete destruction of the airplane, may cost the life of its pilot. The pilot trusts your judgment. When you inspect the alighting gear, make certain that no oversight of yours will result in a crack up. These men are inspecting the nose alighting gear of a P-38. To make sure that the shimmy damper device halfway up the nose strut is working properly, Turn the wheel through its steering arc and center it. Remove the cap and check the level of the hydraulic fluid in the shimmy damper reservoir. Your technical orders or the instruction plate on the reservoir will tell you what fluid to use. Place a rag under the reservoir to keep any excess fluid off the strut and tire. Fill the reservoir carefully using an ordinary syringe. When it is full, wipe off any excess fluid. Screw the filler plug part way back in. And turn the nose wheel through its full steering arc. Do this at least twice to free any entrapped air. If more fluid is needed, add it at this time. If the damper is full, Tighten the plug and wipe off all excessive fluid. Examine all castellated nuts and see that they are properly safety. The bolt should always come completely through the nut. If it does not and cannot be tightened further, a longer bolt should be installed. Measure the struts to see that they are properly inflated. The strut should be inflated within one quarter of an inch, plus or minus the correct extension. Most struts carry a metal instruction plate, which will specify the proper extension, the correct hydraulic fluid, and other necessary information regarding that particular strut. In checking the extension, measure from the upper edge of the red marking line to the point where the strut enters the cylinder. Measure all struts while the plane is normally loaded and standing on level ground. While you are measuring the struts, you can also check the tires for inflation. See that each tire is inflated so the pressure line along the sidewall is horizontal or parallel with the ground when the plane is normally loaded. Check all flexible hydraulic lines for wear or chafing. These hydraulic lines operate the brakes and should be examined with care. If a hydraulic line is interfering with the door upon retraction, or if it vibrates excessively, the point of wear will often show up as a worn or shiny spot on the line. Sometimes the line can be kept from vibrating by fastening it at the point of wear with ordinary friction tape. Tape is used only to prevent wear, never to repair a leak in the line. Drops of fluid hanging upon the hydraulic lines within the wheel well should be wiped off. If the leak is near a fitting, you may be able to stop it by tightening the fitting. However, if the line continues to leak, it should be replaced. When you are inspecting the alighting gear, check all cables for looseness or fouling. Broken strands can be discovered by drawing a rag along the cable. Where it catches, examine the cable. If there are more than six broken strands in any one inch length, a new cable must be installed. Never run your bare hand along a cable. The broken strands are sharp and may cause dangerous and painful cuts. Examine the cables carefully where they pass over the pulleys or through fair leads. 
Turn the wheels on the pulleys and make sure that they turn freely. Try all cables for tightness, and if they seem loose, test them with a tensiometer. Correct cable tensions are listed in your technical order. These cables should have, normally, a tension of 70 pounds, within a tolerance of plus or minus 5 pounds. It is your business to see that they are right. Go over the interior of the wheel well and notice any signs of chafing or interference. Here you can see where the spinning wheel has rubbed against the door. If you find interference of this sort, check it for adjustment. Check the whole surface of the door for dirt or damage. Inspect the linen patches over the lightning holes. See that they are not torn or loose around the edges. Check the surface of the strut for signs of chafing or corrosion. Any wear or deterioration of the finish should be noticed. Examine the strut carefully for cracks. A crack that is undetected will enlarge to a full break and result in a failure of the alighting gear. Look for cracks in the welded angles of any bracing. Cracks may also show up in the corners of casting. If you find a crack, examine it carefully, mark it, and order the part removed for magnet luxing. When you are inspecting the alighting gear, you cannot be too careful in looking for this type of structural weakness. For a complete and thorough inspection, the airplane must be wing jacked. With all weight removed from the alighting gear, you will be able to detect loose or ill-fitting parts by shaking the assembly. Test the doors and see that the turnbuckles on the door operating rods are properly adjusted. If you can thrust the wire through the testing hole, the bolt is not safely threaded, and a longer bolt should be used. Test all brackets and braces by shaking them. In this way, you can detect worn bolts or enlarged bolt holes which have been worn out of round. In this discarded bracing, you can see how the bolt holes become worn. If you find badly worn parts such as this, make sure that they are replaced. Twists or bends in the strut or bracing can sometimes be detected by laying a straight edge along the part that seems to be out of line. If a part is twisted or bent, it must be replaced. With the airplane wing jack, it is possible to retract and extend the wheels to see if the alighting gear operates properly. Make sure the wheels clear the doors and the interior of the wheel well. Check the position indicator dial in the cockpit and make sure the dial indicates accurately the position of the wheels. Retract and extend the wheel several times as you inspect them, and be certain there is nothing you have overlooked. For if your inspection fails to turn up a defect, which happens to be present in the alighting gear, you, the mechanic, personally may be responsible for washing out one of our much-needed airplanes, or even for the death of your pilot. <laughs>